I cannot begin to tell you how long I've been meaning to get to Bubsy. At the same time, though, I wasn't in any real rush. Bubsy, now, I've known about this Bobcat since the mid-90s, watching my uncle play it a few times. I wasn't very interested in what I was looking at, which was odd for me because I was usually always anxious to try out what my uncle played, but Bubsy was just not hitting any of the right spots, so I passed on it. And then, a fan donated the first game to me, and I thought, okay, this is it. I think it's time to look at Bubsy. And that was part of the reason why this video took so long, you know, getting all the games for this video. That, and I caught a cold after coming back from PAX East, and that was fun. But you guys have waited long enough, it's time for Bubsy, and we're looking at them all. You know how in today's generation there seems to be a surplus or in some of the viewpoints an oversaturation of games in one genre like first person shooters for instance? Well in the 90s that was the same deal with the mascot platform game. After Mario and Sonic there were an immeasurable number of shots to capitalize on their success and some of them were not so bad but there were a lot of failures. I sort of wanted to dedicate a marathon to mascot platform games just to see if any of them held up, you know, maybe find some diamonds in the rough. I don't see it happening for a while but Bubsy's getting the special treatment now. I never liked the shape of these Genesis cartridges, they usually spelled bad news from experience but that's just a coincidence most likely. Bubsy the Bobcat was the creation of the now ironically titled Accolade. He liked to collect balls of yarn and he had a thing against these alien creatures called Woolies. There's nothing really special with the storyline, and I mean that for every Bubsy game. They're all pretty simple. The emphasis was more on the wisecracks and the obliteration of the fourth wall. Bubsy didn't pack so much of an attitude, but he had a mouth, and he had no problem letting you know what he thought about the current situation, whether you wanted to hear it or not. Hey, I didn't like this stuff. It's not like Bubsy constantly flaps his gums when you're playing as him, he doesn't quip about who he just jumped on, he doesn't say bounce tree when you jump off of a tree, but he does say something whenever you start a stage, whether you enter it for the first time or die, and that's where you'll start getting annoyed, because Bubsy dies very easily. The Bobcat can't afford to get hurt, like, at all. He gets hit once, that's it. He falls down, he tumbles, he falls apart, he drowns, and even melts. He also can't fall for too long, otherwise that kills him too. Bubsy can glide to soar across terrain and you can use that to save yourself from fall damage because for some reason in this game, landing on your gut is safer than landing on your feet. There are power-ups, but they're exceedingly rare, very hard to find, they only last for a few seconds, and it doesn't save Bubsy from everything, namely environmental hazards. Okay, so Bubsy is frail, that just means I gotta play it safe, and that's when I found out that I couldn't play it safe even if I tried, and I got a checklist here. The first thing that raised the red flag for me was how close the camera was to Bubsy. Is it even accurate to call it a camera in a 2D game? I guess sprite size would be more on point. And in that case, everything is too big for my liking, and when that's a problem, it leads to a bunch of other problems, such as being unable to see where everything is. If you leave the game running long enough at the title screen, you get this small tutorial sequence that somewhat encourages you to always take a look at your surroundings, and Bubsy can do just that by holding up or down on the D-pad, and you can hold down the C button to pan the camera in any direction you want. So I'm assuming they want me to take a slow, methodical approach with Bubsy, and that would be fine if Bubsy didn't jump so goddamn high and move as fast as Sonic. Bubsy's quick on his feet, but this level design was not built with that speed in mind, and with this high jump it's nearly impossible to tell where you're going to land because of, again, how close this camera is in relation to Bubsy. Even the look around feature doesn't show you everything, and that really bites you in the ass later on. The bottom line is that there's plenty of leaps of faith, enemies coming out of nowhere, and combined with Bubsy's utter lack of hit points, this means a lot of this, and a lot of this. More like a bridge too short. You have 9 lives per run, way more than your average platformer, but then you begin playing the game and start to wonder if that was a last minute change of some sort of half-assed effort to circumvent the bullshit kids would go through without having to overhaul core aspects of the game. Continues need to be found if you want to keep playing the current stage when you eventually waste those lives, but there's also a password system you can use to do pretty much the same thing. Completing the adventure is only a matter of time in that regard, but that's if you decide not to put the game down after the first zone. I honestly wanted to, damn it, but I pressed on into my displeasure. I discovered that Bubsy didn't get any better. All those problems that I mentioned before, you start to experience them very early on and it just never seems to improve. The pain of death, limited views, level design that can't decide on whether Bubsy should go fast or not. Every level has these problems and some have their own exclusive issues. Check this out right here. I'm in this canyon area. I get a checkpoint and I end up dying later on. And when I respawned, I was placed right on top of an enemy. Wonderful enemy placement there, truly. That's, that's some gold X award material shit. Bubsy has no problem reusing tons of set pieces within the same zone to pad levels out, making the game longer for arbitrary reasons. If you felt like you've been here before, that's probably because you were there in a different location one minute ago, and every setback you had there, you're gonna have here. And I realize that's nothing new, Mario and Sonic did that plenty of times, but that was more on the look of the level rather than the actual construction. Again, I bring up the canyon level. Every stage in this zone begins with this train sequence. You get to the front, you jump out of the train, you enter the canyon area, and then by the next stage, you're back on the train again for some reason, only to jump out of it again, 
to head back to the canyon again. The imagination levels here weren't very high at this point, I'd imagine. This is how I play Bubsy. I just carefully jump around all over the place and constantly stop to look at things with the camera pan because if I attempt something as simple as running on the floor, I'm going to collide with something that'll suddenly appear on screen, and at times I can't even get away with that because something could be lurking above Bubsy, and the only way I'll see it is by dying from it. Plus, Bubsy likes to hold on to what little momentum he has whenever he gets some, regardless of your directional input. This leads me to drift slightly left or right when I mean to be careful, and that often spells out trouble with tiny platforms like these. It's not just a matter of how the levels look that bore me, it's this method of playing the game that makes all these stages feel like one collective group of blech, and I'm only doing it this way just to survive. Making Bubsy as fragile as he is here was the biggest boneheaded move this game could possibly make. Does this look like I'm having fun? Oh, are you still playing this thing? You little shit. Well, I guess Bubsy doesn't want me to play the game anymore, so I'll do just that. Okay, now... Eventually, Bubsy 1 would see a re-release on the PC in 1995, and it's really the only thing I'm not covering for this video. As far as I'm aware, it's just Bubsy 1 on computers. But it did have something that the Super Nintendo and Sega Genesis versions didn't have, and that was an animated pilot of a Bubsy cartoon that never saw the light of day that was television broadcast. And as soon as you watch it, which you can easily find on YouTube, you'll see why. This surpasses any definition or interpretation of painful. It's like everything wrong with a 90s animated cartoon. You got limited animation, pitifully corny jokes with no sense of subtlety or dignity for that matter. And they somehow got Rob Paulson to do this shit. Rob Paulson, the voice of Yakko, Pinky, Dr. Otto Scratch and stuff, he must have had some high-end bills to pay that year. And yeah, he technically started voicing Bubsy since the first game. He's the one who supplied the lines. But this is a 24-minute cartoon. The shit that comes out of Bubsy's mouth is wretched. He's more insufferable than appealing, and he's the star of this damn thing. What can possibly go wrong? I think he says that in every scene he's in, in one form or another. It's not even funny and pretty sad in hindsight. The only thing I can somewhat relate to is this armadillo guy who wants nothing to do with what's going on and gets dragged into the mess because Bubsy won't leave him alone. The problem is, while that was the point of the armadillo's role in this story, it unfortunately hits too close to home for me in a meta sense. I also want nothing to do with Bubsy, but he insists on sticking around like genital herpes. As such, Bubsy 2 for the Genesis. Bubsy, I'm over here, buddy. You're... You're sort of looking the wrong way, dude. Oh, you motherfucker. Now, the one thing I sort of found likable about Bubsy 2 from the get-go was not from the game, but rather its manual. They went out of their way to make a short comic explaining events that lead up to the game. The writing is about the same quality as the cartoon, but I appreciate the artistic effort. It looks like I had more care put into it than anything else. I know, it's not much, but it's an interesting way to deliver a prologue. I'll give a compliment when I can, folks. Bubsy's already striking up big time for me. Sadly, this little comic is the best thing about Bubsy 2 for me, because the game does not do much to improve anything. Okay, it does one thing right. It gives Bubsy a health meter. I think you can get hit three times before Bubsy dies, so off the bat your life expectancy is longer by default, and you can collect bandages to restore your health. Everything else, though? Eh. Bubsy falls a little faster now when jumping, but since he's still packing that speed, this only leads to very spastic movement. The camera's still too close, and though the level variety is a little better, I'm still fumbling around places and hoping to god I don't line on something that'll kill me in one hit or lead me on the wrong pathway. Accolade made a deal with Nerf to give Bubsy a Nerf gun to deal with enemies. You gotta find it first, it's a power-up after all, but it's about as effective as shooting someone with an actual Nerf gun. They couldn't give Bubsy a rapid fire model, I wanna get Rambo up in this son bitch. Hell, give me the shit Emperor Zerg used in Toy Story 2. I can see glimmers of a solid game with Bubsy too, you know, giving him a health bar and attempt at giving him weapons and bonus games to score extra lives, but most of the major problems with the original Bubsy weren't fixed, and since you guys already know what I hate about the first game, explaining them again here would only be redundant. Still, I should probably look at Bubsy 2 for the Game Boy anyway. Bubsy... Tooth? Oh wait, that's a trademark symbol. Well, it's about what I expected, a watered-down version of Bubsy 2. There were five worlds to explore in the console game, this version only has three, and hot damn, this game looks desolate. There's a black void for a background in every stage, it's like this entire game takes place in a cave. Bubsy jumps like he's in space, extremely high and extremely slow. I think fall damage was removed, but I'm getting hurt by other means anyway, like questionable hit detection and going brain dead from this spacious design. It may not be obvious, but there's an actual level below me, but I can just ignore the entire thing because of my moon jump and glide. And there you go, the end of the stage and the end of my curiosity. Now this really took me by surprise. There was a Bubsy game for the Atari Jaguar. This was not as easy to find compared to Bubsy 2 or 3D, and even then, I don't own a Jaguar. But I couldn't just ignore this and head straight to 3D, so I asked for some assistance this time, and thanks to my uncle, here we go. The Atari Jaguar, a 64-bit system that had qualities but ultimately failed to find an audience. Another victim of the 90s console wars. <laughs> Look at this, he even has the Jaguar CD attachment, which I'm pretty sure doesn't work. I'm geeking out just looking at this thing. I used to play Tempest 2000 on this a long time ago, I think right when the system came out. 
Uncle, thank you so much for the loan so that I could look at the next Bubsy game. You didn't have to lend me your entire Jaguar library of games, though, though I am slightly curious. Where did you learn to fly? <laughs> but anyway, this fucking game. You know when Bubsy 2 was released? October of 1994. Bubsy for the Jaguar? December of 1994. While Accolade was busy making the sequel, they had someone else make another game for a different system. I can just smell the budget cuts. And apparently there was no collaboration between Accolade and Imagic Tech Design because instead of trying to improve from Bubsy 1, they decided to just give us Bubsy 1 with all of its problems, now with unnecessarily huge levels. Bigger is not always better, people. It takes an eternity to clear these stages. After I cross the seventh checkpoint, I start to wonder what the end of the damn stage is. And their method of expanding levels was not only just reusing shit, but stretching out what's already there and filling the numerous gaps with nonsensical structures. What am I traveling on here? This isn't level design, this just looks like something a five-year-old made with a stage generator in Smash 4. And I wished it would end already. By that I mean actually finishing a level instead of just getting whacked by something off screen. This game above all other Bubsy titles is positively rancid with that, as well as awful collision detection. And since Bubsy's back to being a one-hit point pussy, it's safe to assume over half of your adventure would just be staring at title cards and listening to what Bubsy has to say. Oh sure, let's all torch the Bubster. But here's what's most disappointing about this one. By the third game, you should have something that works, simultaneous development or not. Super Mario Bros. 3, Sonic 3, need I say more? When was the quality control? Wasn't there someone or something out there that said, hey guys, maybe we should just slow it down a bit? We're already releasing the second Bubsy game just a year after the first one, but now we're giving them two games? Between 1993 and 1996, there were four Bubsy games released. If you want to count the Game Boy version of Bubsy 2 and the PC port of the original Bubsy, that's six fucking games! Accolade's slogan was games with personality, and Bubsy sure does have a personality, and you know, there's nothing wrong with that, but it feels like the character was more important than the actual game quality. Bubsy is the pits, and the only reason why I'm not going all ape shit is because I didn't really have any sort of expectations for any of this. Maybe a bit for Bubsy 2 and the Jaguar game, but only because I naturally expected a sequel to be an improvement, and no, these are certainly not. Listen to me, it sounds like I'm ending the video here, I haven't even looked at Bubsy 3D yet. The last of the Bubsy games, and the Bobcat Shift to 3D. Yep, it's 3D, all right. It's 3D and almost nothing else. Just look at this, folks. This, this is what you present as a midterm project in a 3D class, your first 3D class. There's nothing here, just the most basic of shapes and constructs. Actual textures are about as rare as blue moons. Sometimes there's just no graphics at all. It's unreal that this was considered passable for the PlayStation in 1996, no less. We had Super Mario 64, we had Crash Bandicoot. What the fuck happened here? And this is just on looks. You wanna talk about the actual game? Jesus Christ, a 3D platformer with tank controls. And tank controls are something I can get past if the game is designed around it. Look at Croc Legend of the Gabos. It hasn't aged well in some areas, but I can play this game no problem, tank controls and all, because it's designed with that control scheme in mind. Bubsy 3D? Fuck no, it's just a shitload of wide open space with painfully bare foundations. Floating platforms because yes, basic collectibles because it's on their contract, and maybe a boss fight every once in a while, but what I'm doing here? This is it. And somehow they managed to even mess that up at points, with level constructions which will only work if Bubsy had appropriate controls. And then there's the complete disregard of cohesion with things like Bubsy's glide. You can glide on propeller fans to get higher distances. Did you also know you can do that with the boss's gun residue? No? What are you, stupid? Of course you can do that, come on. You can't control the camera, so I suppose to make up for that, your view automatically focuses on the ground whenever Bubsy jumps. You know, to help see where you're going, which totally doesn't disorient you. Jumping is also one of the only ways you can kill things without finding a proper power-up, which are once again rare, but you'll probably end up taking a hit most of the time because it's nearly impossible to line up a jump correctly when the camera suddenly decides to shift whenever you do so. Other concepts they introduce are just as broken as anything else, whether it's because of control issues or because of lack of trying, like these underwater sections. I could just swim to the goal, no worries about threats, no worries about drowning, they're just inconsequential changes of scenery. Bubsy 3D looks and feels like a concept of a platform game that was created before Super Mario Bros. went and changed the industry in 1985. This is wrong on so many levels. So many levels. In retrospect though, there's something in me that kind of finds the Jaguar game worse. Don't misunderstand, I didn't have a good time with any of these games, but Jaguar Bubsy actively angered me with how backwards it was. Bubsy 3D is on an entirely different level, but during that process of reaching that bizarre inverted nirvana, it managed to achieve a quality that's so horrendously awful that it needs to be played to be believed. I also spent more to get Jaguar Bubsy compared to Bubsy 3D, so that may have something to do with it as well. Bubsy, should you ever find yourself back from the dead, just learn that these are not how you make a successful series. What can possibly go wrong? This is what can go wrong. 
I want to take this time to thank the person who donated me the first Bubsy game to finally get this ball rolling. And, you know, the marathon's almost over, folks. There's only a handful of games left. So, with that said, I'll see you guys next week with X-Men Legends 1 and 2 for the Nintendo GameCube. In the meantime, I appreciate your patience for waiting this long, you know, after the Echo of the Dolphin review. You guys have yourselves a great night. Thank you for watching, and take care.